Hello, uh, I'm Brandon Garman. I'm currently attending the LA Film School, and my film is Devil's Hour. Hi, my name is Gwen, and I'm a student at the Los Angeles Film School Film, film Production, and my movie is Long Ramones. In my case, uh, Devil's Hour was made a year ago as our class project for production one and uh, we had barely learned how to use the boom so all the audio was just complete just completely bad so I knew the following year I was going to take sound design so I put my film on the shelf and I waited and waited and as I was in sound design I was uh, riding the elevator up and I saw the little poster saying hey there is this live score film festival submit a film and I had two uh, post films that I've been working on. So Devil's Hour was the only one that was ready, kind of just complete and kind of ready to go. So I sent that out and I got the email from uh, Elric and I was good to go. So um, No Mamos was my first project. Um, I, it, I had to screen it in class and Miss Adamek liked it so much that she showed it to the faculty and they decided to send it to the, the festival. The basic rundown is a, a young woman named Ash is trying to escape her apartment because her sister is possessed by a demon. Uh, when we made this for production one, it was uh, October 1st, so we were in this Halloween theme and uh, we had just had a quick course, uh, course uh, of how to like write beats, and so I just wrote this little simple thing from a, a, lot, a larger script, but I just we filmed a little scene of it. and. Uh, yeah, and so Halloween gave the inspiration for the horror, but the, but the style and the way, and what I love is from Sam Raimi, uh, Evil Dead, Drag Me to Hell. He's like one of my heroes growing up when I was a little kid. And so um, that's what really put the fill in. So uh, luckily, uh, David, who, who is my AD, me and him are huge Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi fans. So that's why I made him my AD, and we were just hand in hand in sync about how we're gonna do this and planning it all out. Um, I think what it was is because uh, we had like uh, one day, one night to write everything up and I was like, hey, how am I going to like break this down really fast and you know, because uh, in my mind I get like scenes of movies, like usually it's always like a middle of a movie or an end and then I have to fill in the blanks. So when I started out it was this really cool uh, uh, Dutch angle camera coming down to a knife. And then I was like, hey, how am I going to explain it? Is, why is there a knife in the middle of a living room? And I was like thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, birthday cake. And then I was like, all right, cool. We'll just run with it. It's her birthday, which uh, helped in the beginning intro because I knew we couldn't film uh, a fight scene and this dra dramatic fight scene and everything. So I used uh, just voice audio to show that it was in the past. And then we just did like stills of like, you know, broken glass, table, cake, and all that just so we could save time for filming instead of trying to use all of our time to film that one little scene. The story is about a man who dreams to escape the charade he's built around himself to protect, um, I guess to protect himself from people's judgments. It's very complicated because I don't want to give too much away because there's a twist at the end. So I would say this movie is about exploring your subconscious, it's about dreams. And how, because I thought about it, and how, you know, when in, in this realm, so in this, in the reality, you can't really truly be yourself because you're afraid of people's judgments. The only place that you could actually truly be yourself is in your dreams. You have the full ability to explore who you are, do whatever you want. Once we were in the mix, uh, coming up with the soundtrack and everything, that was fun and uh, being creative and just bouncing ideas off of each other. But before that, it was very nerve wracking because I have never talked to a composer before and haven't been taught. I had to get a quick crash course with all the lingo. Um, and uh, so it, it was nerve wracking in the beginning, but luckily, by like the fate of the gods, that my composer, Nathalie, she has uh, worked with Christopher Young, and he did the Drag Me to Hell. And so we were pitching ideas of like different horror movie sounds, and I had mentioned Drag Me to Hell. 
And then right at that moment, she clicked with me because she was like, yeah, I was working with Sam Raimi. I was working with Christopher Young. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. And so we fell right into her group. And it was just nice and organic and bouncing off ideas. Yes, yeah, so uh, she was living in Montreal. And so we had to keep doing Skype sessions like late at night or like super early. And so, you know, for me, that, that was a lot easier because like I crack sometimes when I meet people one on one for the first time. So, uh, yeah, just that first Skype interview was just, you know, nervous because I was like, should I have more light? Do I look all right? Do I look crazy? Do I, you know, I don't want to look like a serial killer, you know, like and then uh, just after that first one, it was it went smooth. So I got lucky because we met at a, a coffee bean and it was actually really cool because I knew exactly what I wanted and the funny thing is that I actually composed the music before I met her. So I had something in mind, I would use it because it was terrible, but I had something in mind, I had, I had this, I, I heard it I guess when, when I made the movie. So it's, it was kind of a guideline, you know, for her to follow. And I gave her a lot of notes, but I still gave her the total freedom to, you know, to explore her sounds or anything she wanted to do. But it was great. I just, I just met her once. Uh, she kept uh, sending me some, some of her sounds and what she had. I, I loved it. She was great. Uh, Joy was great. She's very, very talented. Uh, I'm super grateful that I had her. I, we had a great time, and it was just so great. Live. It was just so full and so thick. It was so alive. Uh, yeah, I'm very proud of it. So in our production one, we were a small group, and there was only six of us that were uh, working on this project, so we all had to like double up or triple up on certain positions, and so uh, you don't see that in the credits, because I put that originally in the credits, and it just looks silly, like Brandon Garman, Brandon Garman, Brandon Garman, and then like David, 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 you know, just, and, um, but we, um, I was fortunate that the group that was left in production one are the ones that are dedicated to the craft, who are passionate for film. They're the ones I could count on saying, hey, we're going to film at 6 a.m. and they show up at 5.30 in the morning ready to go. And so um, that's when I learned that the, the, these core of six students are the ones that I'm going to be making films with for like from now on because uh, it was just perfect, organic, we were in sync. It was a, a great, just a great process all the way through, and none of them backed down from the challenge because we had a, like that shot carrying down from the clock to the chimney to a Dutch. Like I blueprinted it all out and everything, and then everyone's like, "So how do we do that?" Because we haven't been taught. I'm like, "That's a good question." And then, uh, and so at the end of the day, we switched to uh, a a A7S2 on a Ronin, and so we shot the whole thing like that. But uh, it was just great to have. Uh, people who were, weren't afraid to fail because again uh, a lot of people are always so concerned of like oh, we're gonna fail or, or we're not gonna make this class assignment great and you know it's, it's all about learning and these guys not didn't hesitate at all they were just with it like if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't let's just have fun what about you, Glenn? well I had we were only two on the project so it was myself and my cinematographer Jason which is he's in my class and uh, I, I got to see his work online, and I just uh, reached out to him, and I said, I think we should do this. And he was like, okay, just tell me more about it. I, I just explained to him, and he was, he was into it. And, you know, so he took care of the cinematography. I thought it was great for my first project. I thought he did amazing. We had to wait for um, sunrise, perfect moment, because it was shot in Santa Monica on the beach, and we used a, uh, a, a, a long lens because we need, we kind of wanted to blur what's you know in Santa Monica because we want to have this dreamiest aspect. The coolest experience with it is fun. For me, it was like uh, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy trying to get this final cut submitted to the festival. I didn't think I was going to make it. I had to ask for extensions because uh, uh, the MacBook. Pro plus Adobe After Effects does not mix well, and it just kept crashing and crashing, and uh, it was, you know, I was just heartbroken every time. So finally, sitting down in the seat, and it's up on the screen, that was like the first moment that I had to, uh, I got a breath, I got to breathe, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. So that was like the first moment that I got to breathe and relax and enjoy it, and 
the for me the, the 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 best part of it was during my cut and the things that I wrote um, where I wanted people to laugh at because my my it's in the horror genre but it's not a horror movie it's just entertaining that's that was the whole point of this was to be entertaining not to take itself seriously just to give an escape just to entertain people and so to hear the audience laugh and where I wanted them to laugh was like the greatest experience I was like you know what? this is where uh, I need to be you know and it was really a great reinsurance for me the thing is that's funny because I knew we had no dialogue at all so because I knew that I was actually giving live directions to my actors so there were you know I, w I would say at the same time while my cinematographer Jason would, would, would shoot it I would be I would say oh just put your hand right there and then oh kiss or you know touch him right there or right here I would actually give them live directions and it, and it was all one take because I want to keep this raw thing that was going on, which is actors cannot think. They don't have time to think. They have to do it right away. So it was great. I thought it turned out great. For all the fellow students here at LA Film. Oh. Um, so with me and luckily the six individuals that I work with, and, and even with new class, I'm always accepting, but I always say the same thing before we start shooting is, let's put in, let's make this no matter if it's a class assignment or a big film, always give 100% because you never know what will happen. And, you know, like this production one made it to this festival. Mm -hmm. And so always, always say to everyone, always give it 100% and make it something that you're proud of to show your friends, your family, and to put onto your reel. So a lot of people are waiting until their thesis film or P2 to be like, this is what I'm gonna use for my reel. But, Every class assignment is an opportunity for you to show off your craft. Mm. And so always give 100%, guys.